Welcome to Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Today's video, we're going to be replicating, I want to say, an 1800 style gate. It is going to have a metal frame with wood inserts and a lot of decorative clavos type decor. So let's get started on today's video. Okay, so the metal we're going to be using for today's project, at least for the frame part of it, is going to be some 2 by 5 inch rectangular tubing. This is 120 wall. Now, interesting fact about this particular material I'm using is it's called um, pickled oil. Now, this is something that the metal supplier had mentioned to me. I don't really know a lot about it, so I've looked it up, did a little bit of research, and uh, Apparently what it is, it's the same thing as hot rolled right here. This is an example of some hot rolled material. This is typically what I would use um, for building, uh, you know, bigger, heavier gates. Uh, apparently it started out that way. And what they do is they set this stuff in what would be like a, a hydrochloric acid type of formula. And it takes off and strips any impurities that the, that the material might have, such as rust, mill scale, and it sort of cleans it up and gives us a clean appearance. Uh, and then they go ahead and, and coat it in a water-soluble type of oil solution. Uh, therefore, this is what they call pickle oil. Something a little bit new to me. Haven't used a lot of it, but uh, uh, you can see how much cleaner it is. I don't think it's going to affect the overall uh, look of it. It is going to be painted, so um, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. But let's get started with today's video. All right, so I want you to think about that. Water-soluble oil solution. Now, I'm just quoting what, uh, what I read on the internet. I didn't think water and oil uh, mixed very well together, but uh, that's uh, what they said, pickled oil. Interesting. All right, well, you can see I'm cutting everything uh, to length right here. This is, like I said, two by five inch material. And uh, even though I've got a 15 inch cutoff saw, uh, it wasn't quite enough to get all the way through the five inch material on a 45. So you can see that I just had to use my cutoff saw uh, to finish things up right here. You know, I've had a lot of good success with this cutoff saw. Um, you know, even, you know, most saws are 14 inch. That's uh, Evolution puts out this this 15 inch and you wouldn't think that makes a big difference, but uh, it really does. It, uh, it adds a, a quite a bit of difference uh, when you're cutting bigger material. All right, with everything all cut up, Back over to the welding table right here, and we're just going to put this square together, or rectangle, I should say. I've got my table dogs there, and I'm going to clamp everything down. I'm going to get everything nice and square. I'll double check it uh, diagonally. Uh, that's a good way to confirm your square, is to take a tape measure and go from one end uh, diagonally across either side, and that dimension should be the same. All right, with everything nice and square, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to weld this all out as much as I can on this side right here. Now for this part of the frame, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to ultimately, you know, grind these welds down smooth. Uh, I want to make this frame look like it's uh, one solid uh, piece of uh, material. I got the one side done, flipped it over to the other side, and I'm just finishing up the welding right here. You can see I don't have anything clamped down right here. Everything stayed nice and square, nice and flat. I'm operating off the HTP Pro Pulse 220 MTS here today. Um, um, using 35 thousandths wire and 9010 gas, 90% argon, 10% CO2. And for this material at about an eighth of an inch thick, I like running somewhere between 230, 240 inches a minute. That works best for me on this uh, machine for this type of material. All right, so you can just see that I'm grinding everything down nice and smooth here all the way around just using a uh, flap disc here this is a uh, about a 36 grit flap disc and a lot of times i like to come in and start with a with a, a more coarser grit and then come back with a smoother grit to smooth things down do that a lot I like to hit it up with some uh, a non-woven pad at the very end it kind of smooths things off all right time to get the kick plate uh, installed in the bottom or at least get cut out. I'm over here at my plasma table here and this is all you can see right there 11 gauge cold roll. 11 gauge is really close to eighth of an inch and I just cut out the dimension that I need the size I need 
and that is going to go on the very bottom of the gate right here. I'm using the 2x4 to, uh, to space this up or shore this up a little bit. You know, we talked about, I talked about glavos, a lot of uh, clavos, I should say, uh, nails or spikes. And I was first thinking that I was going to do this with some quarter inch uh, flat bar stock and I was going to drill through. And I'm able to order these things um, online, but I was thumbing through the uh, King Metals uh, catalog and I saw these things pre-made, ideal, perfect. You know, I ordered them up from King Metals. King Metals is not a sponsor of mine. Um, this is just I'm um, fortunate enough. They have got four locations around the United States. I'm fortunate enough to have one close to uh, me here in Southern California. They do have a lot of stuff in their catalog. Um, I get a lot of it here in the L.A. facility, but a lot of it gets shipped from the Dallas uh, facility as well. You guys should check that out. Again, I'm not affiliated with them at all. It's just uh, they got some good stuff there. All right, here's my two by four spacers. And now I'm gonna start assembling everything. You can see these are some cross, the, the cross braces are going in there, the kick plate at the bottom, and I'm just gonna get everything in place and clamp everything down and be sure it is nice and square, nice and straight uh, before I get started to go any farther. You know, I couldn't imagine doing this if I didn't have this welding table and all these clamps. It, it, it just uh, makes everything uh, so much easier and so much smoother once everything is uh, secured in place. And I'm just going to go along here now. I'm just going to weld everything all in. Just going to be a bead across the very top on, on both sides there. And then a little bit on the kick plate. You can see that uh, it's just uh, spaced out about a foot or so. And I'm just using about a one inch bead. You know, I like the, I'm going to leave these welds right here. I'm going to leave everything in there. I want that, uh, that old style, I guess you want to call 1800 style look. Uh, makes it look rustic. You know, you often wonder how they did these things back in the day. Um, you know, how they made everything is probably made by hand. They got some pretty cool gates uh, back in the early centuries. You know, you can see that... Uh, I went to my, you know, I save a lot of my metal cutoffs, and uh, here, here's a good, here's a good example. Uh, this is some quarter inch by two inch by two inch flat bar, you know, and these were drops from something left over, and I thought I'm going to hang on to these. You never know when I'm going to need some quarter inch two by two pieces, and and here it is. Uh, on these particular ones, this is going to be some decor that's going to be added to each corner. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and drill through the center right here, and I've got some of these bigger clavos that were left over from a project that I've done a while back and uh, what I'm going to ultimately do is uh, you know cut those off and weld them on before I do that I've got these over to the uh, burr king and I'm just going to soften up the edges a little bit make them a little bit smooth and finish them up all right so there they are clavos spikes whatever you want to call them and uh, I've got them they, they come with this long uh tails on the end you can see I'm just gonna mark them right here and then I'm gonna cut them off and I'm gonna weld them from the back side I bought a whole bunch of these from a job that I did a while back and, and I only used a handful of them so I got a lot of these leftovers it's gonna work out pretty good and just like that I didn't want uh, I didn't want these I didn't want to weld them to the front side because I just didn't want to see uh, the weld bead on the round part to the metal I wanted them to look like big rivets if you will uh, so once I got that done, uh, just kind of smoothed off the back. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start welding them to the uh, to the corner. You know, you guys often uh, um, know where want to know where I get my designs. You know, this this is not a design of mine. Uh, the client um, had shown me a picture that uh, that they that they kind of liked, and I'm taking I'm building this gate a little bit kind of like the picture not exactly like it uh, I have made some changes um, but uh, a lot of times that's what happens I don't design all my gates uh, a lot of these gates are, are are designed by others and I just build them so this is just uh, like I said we're welding these things to um, each corner and I'm just getting them centered in each corner and I'm just gonna put a tack uh, right on each corner all the way around now this is a piece of that uh, flat bar with all the Clavos in it I had left over and I thought this would be appropriate place to weld to the bottom of the kick plate 
And then I'm going to go around and uh, finish it off with some 3 quarter inch by 8 inch flat bar stock. Now this is going to go around the outside perimeter and this is what retains the wood uh, on the sides. Uh, you know, uh, it kind of gives that re reveal and the wood is tucked in behind there. Now I've got these, uh, I've got this, this stuff recessed in about 3 eighths of an inch. Uh, it just gives a, a finished look uh, of that re recessed in there rather than being flush to the front. I, th I think it's just a good look. All right, the same 2 by 4 spacers right there. And then I'm just going to go all the way around the outside edge. And I'm going to weld these up 3 quarter inch by 8 inch uh, flat bar stock to the sides all the way around. Not too much, just uh, about an inch long bead, a little bit in the corner and one in the middle. So now it's time to install the dreaded lockbox. I seem to struggle with these things all the time. You know, I've mentioned in my previous videos that uh, it might be a good idea to install these lockboxes prior to building your frame. You know, I've learned that the hard way, and that is probably the way to go. But on this situation right here, I decided not to do that. I'm just going to work my way around. This is some five-inch, uh, you know, wide material, and I thought I would just try to cut this box. It's a single box. And now that the frame is all welded together and we've got cross support through, I just wanted to be able to cut the opening here on this side and fit the box right in there and have a nice uh, tight, smooth fit. So I've gone both ways. Like I said, I've, I've, I've installed the boxes prior to doing the frame. I've cut the boxes in after doing the frame. That, if you're doing a smaller frame, that really doesn't really work very well because as soon as you cut that opening, uh, the frame springs and it's really difficult to get it flat and get it uh, sprung back putting the box in. But this right here you can see that I've just taken half of it at a time and I'm going to clean up these edges. I'm really looking for a tight fit right here. The idea is to get the box uh, fit up right in here so it is perfectly flat to the top surface because I'm going to ultimately you know weld it all the way around and then I'm going to grind that flat uh, to give it the appearance that it's uh, all one one piece. Almost got it here. A little tuning up with uh, with a small file, and um, I'll have a I'll have a really good fit. All right. Well, with it fit right here, you can see I got some mag squares. I'm just going to pull that box right up tight and flush to the existing surface. I'm double checking it with some flat bar stock, and once I know everything is right where it needs to be, I'm just going to tack it in. And then I'm going to turn down the wire feed speed right here. Um, and then I'm just going to go all the way around. I'm turning it down because um, if, if I get a little bit colder weld right here, then it just, uh, the bead just builds up on there instead of burning right in because I am going to grind this down. And so uh, I, I want to have it built up rather than burned in. And you never seem to catch up uh, with the weld if it's uh, too hot because you're burning into the material. If I, if I slow it down a little bit, um, at least I get some buildup, and it makes it, uh, when I grind it down, it makes it look like it's uh, smooth. All right, so I don't know what happened right here, but I was getting ready to grind, and just like that, it's already ground down. <laughs> I, I must have lost some footage right there, but uh, uh, I'm just going around and cleaning things up right here. Uh, uh, you can see the smooth fit. I've flipped the thing around to the other side, and I'm, I'm going to cut the opening up and be able to put uh, uh, open that box up from the other side right here. You know, there's all kinds of different ways of doing it. You know, you, you know, there's a lot, I'm, pretty, I'm sure I'm pretty, a lot of people say, why did you do it that way? Why, why you could have done it this way? Yeah, I probably could have, but you know what? I just build as I go most of the time here and I just try to think what's best. And for me, uh, this is what's, uh, this is what worked out. So the lock box is an inch and five eighths and the material is a true two. So I've got, uh, I've got three eighths of an inch that I need to build up. And so I've got some flat bar stock here, eighth of an inch wide, and I've cut it down to three eighths of an inch. And I'm just going to kind of build a frame around the inside right here to close that all off. And uh, that's going to take care of the, that, uh, the box difference between uh, an inch and five eighths and two inch, uh, two inch thick material. It's still going to allow plenty of room for the lock set uh, to go around there uh, and fit right in. 
I'm taking a little extra time right here. It seems like it's a, a long time and I'm moving things around, but my cut wasn't exactly square and I'm trying to get the, uh, I'm trying to get the flat bar here square. Um, and then I'm going to fill, I'm going to fill that in with weld and grind it down and, and it's going to give it that appearance that it is nice and square. All right. So that was a lot of work, uh, to get that in and, and get it done this way. But, uh, uh, I, I'm pretty satisfied with the way that turned out. Uh, everything looked nice and square and everything looked like it was all part of the frame and built in there. Now, this is something I decided to do at the very last minute and I'm not certain that, uh, <laughs> It, I guess it's okay. I was going to leave that and not put a weld bead on the inside right here, but I decided to go ahead and try to sneak one in. And I just, not trying to make anything look good, but just trying to just seal that up. All right, so this is a lot of questions that I get. I'm going to try to answer this. Uh, a lot of people ask me, first of all, what type of hinges do you use? Well, these particular hinges are called weld-on hinges or bullet hinges. And these ones are seven inches long. And then they asked me a lot, uh, where do you space your hinges? Well, these hinges are seven inches from the top to the top of the hinge and seven, seven inches from the bottom of the frame to the bottom of the hinge. Uh, you know, somewhere between six and seven is where I like to go. That seems to be an equal balance, a pretty good balance. And that seems to work pretty good for me. I'm using some of this anti-spatter right here. Uh, well, clean, uh, well clean, this is a CRC product. I'm going to you know, try to do a pretty nice bead right here on each, both sides of these hinges. And uh, that uh, anti-spatter works pretty good. Couldn't quite reach the other side of this hinge. Had to get up on the welding table to, to get over there to get it. Kind of hard on my old knees, but um, managed to get it done. All right, that works pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, so there it is, uh, the posts and the gate, just about all complete right there. So now it's time to get some primer and some paint on it. This is another frequently asked question I get, what type of paint do I use? Well, a lot of times I do, I powder coat uh, uh, my gates and then sometimes I paint them by hand. Now this is some uh, Rust-Oleum uh, metal primer and I'm gonna put two coats of this on and I'm using a gravity fed sprayer. And that's the way I found that it works the best for me. Get nice even coats, get a lot of paint and primer on there. And uh, it's pretty quick. So it works pretty good to me, with me. All right, I'm coming back with some flat black or matte black. Now this is something that, this is the color that the customer was looking for. Uh, this is what a lot of their decor is in their outdoor kitchen. And they wanted this look of uh, being flat or matte uh, for the frame. And so that's what I'm using right here again, gravity fed sprayer. Put a couple coats of this on, nice and thick. That should last a long time. All right, so the wood of choice here is redwood tongue and groove. This is some one by six material. And uh, the stain here is dark walnut. Uh, this is uh, the color that client was looking for this is kind of what matches the ratchet door kitchen area there their bar area it's dark wood they got open beams that's a really nice look and uh, this is uh, the pretty the closest stain that uh, we could get interesting enough here you can see that uh, uh, the the redwood you can see I got some light boards and some dark boards and you'd think that uh, that would stain differently and look differently and and it really doesn't once it's all stained it all looks the same you can see what I'm doing. I'm, I'm staining each individual board right here, uh, front side and back side. The back side is rough sawn, the front is smooth. And so the idea is to get them stained and then take a rag and wipe them clean. I've, I've noticed if I stain one side and come back and get the other side, there's drips to the other side. So, you know, you live and you learn when you do stuff like this. And there's lots of different ways to apply stain. Um, I suppose you could spray it on. That would be a great option. Uh, use a sponge, use a rag, use a brush like I'm using right here. And that's what I, I chose to use on this particular application as a brush. Get inside all the nooks and all the crannies and, uh, and be sure that uh, you wipe everything down and uh, it stains really nice and, and, and even. A little bit of a time consuming process right here. 
but uh, ultimately got it done. You can just see how important it is that uh, once you start this process, you finish it. Um, be sure that uh, you've got time to do everything and wipe everything nice and clean. If, if uh, like I mentioned earlier, if you if you leave if you leave a board and it's got some drip marks, man, you, you're gonna have a you're gonna have a problem. Uh, the idea is to get it from start to finish, get everything coated, and then wipe down evenly. So one thing about this stain too also is uh, you can see it looks how see how dark it is. It's going on really dark. Uh, you know, once the stain is all dried and you'll, you'll see here in a minute, uh, it, uh, it dries to a light, lighter color and really even and much more pleasing to the eyes. All right. So there's the wood right there, all stained. You can see it uh, dried up really nice. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply some of this uh, Verithane oil base polyurethane. Uh, this is a semi-gloss finish. Uh, the client was not looking for a glossy finish and they didn't want a flat finish. They wanted something with a little sheen to it. And so this is what we applied on there. And you can see how that, it, you know, once you apply that polyurethane, how, how it enhances uh, the grain and enhances the look of the wood. So. Uh, a good solid coat front and back of this uh, polyurethane and that's all it really needed now it's time for installing right here all right so I'm putting the smooth side to the front of the gate the rough side to the back and you can see that I'm hand selecting the, the wood be sure that the grain is, is looking good and be sure I've got everything in the in the order that it needs to be had a little bit of trouble putting this small piece in at the very end um, the camera sped up. This literally took me about 15 minutes to figure out how to get this piece in. Um, I did everything I could and it wasn't going that way. I couldn't get it to go this way. Ultimately, I figured I was going to take it off the backside and kind of bring it in this way and it just snapped right into place. All right. One of the final steps right here is to secure everything with this angle iron. This is some three quarter inch by eighth inch angle iron and I've cut it to length and uh, I've got it pre-drilled and I'm just going to go ahead and install, uh, install this angle iron. Funny thing, uh, you know, I like to use a piece of cardboard when I'm, when I'm drilling this in, you know, so I don't mar the wood finish and you can see that, I don't know if you can read it, but, um, I opened up the trash can and I found this this piece of cardboard in there and it said you're doing a great job. I thought that was uh, pretty appropriate. So that's what I use to go around and uh, not mar the finish. I got four screws on the long side, three screws on the short side. You might see that uh, that tool mat right there. That's pretty cool. That was uh, given to me by a good friend of mine. Uh, I do a lot of work with built by Newkirk um, perfect for something like this to put your tools on a nice clean surface and you don't have to you know, don't worry about anything scuffing it up you know I, I started doing this to, uh, about uh, I don't know six months ago or a year ago with this angle iron it seems to work out pretty good I don't have any complaints and if you want an opportunity to replace the wood down the road you can do that as well and uh, you know I think it's a pretty good uh, pretty good way to go you're not locking anything in and, and uh, be able to replace the wood if you need to down the road well this is a really fun project uh, uh, you know I really enjoy doing this something different every time I get in the shop and it's very satisfying to see uh, something like this come together and there it is before installation and uh, that looks pretty good and then here it is installed they're very happy with the kind is very happy with that works looks real good in the area that it's in i hope you guys enjoyed watching this video thanks for watching don't forget to check out my website at jimblesgarage.com follow us on instagram check us out on facebook see you guys next week see you next time on jimbo's garage